Hello students, I welcome you all to EPG Patshala. My name is Dr. Shiv Kumar Sood. I am senior scientist in the division of animal biochemistry at National Dairy Research Institute that is NDRI in Karnal, Haryana state, India. Today, I will talk about molecular structure databases from the paper Biostatistics and Bioinformatics. Dear students, three dimensional structural positions of the atoms in the molecules, that is proteins, DNA, RNA, is determined using experimental methods such as XX telegraphy and NMR. These experimental methods help to obtain the 3D coordinates of the molecules for their atomic positions. In NMR spectroscopy, radio waves are used and in X-ray stylography, X-rays are used. After determination of the three-dimensional structures of the macromolecules, that is proteins, DNA and RNA, the three-dimensional coordinates are stored in the databases. The main database is PDB, that is Protein Data Bank at RCSB, that is Research Collaboratory for Structural Biology. This has formed the worldwide PDB. In addition, we have another repository known as Macromolecular Modeling Database, that is MMDB at National Center for Biotechnology Information, that is NCBI at Bethesda, Maryland in United States. It also houses the same PDB structures, that is the experimentally determined structures for the proteins and other macromolecules are also housed at MMDB. For understanding sequence, structure and function relationship, MMDB identifies the domains which are there present in the proteins. When we search MMDB for any structure relevant links to the databases, to the links to the information in other databases such as PubChem for bound ligands or literature databases in PubMed, even the uh, sequence, sequences, protein sequences in the sequence database, they are provided for understanding the sequence structure and function relationship. In addition, domains are computationally identified and are used to search the conserved domain database having similar conserved domains. In addition, the present structure for which we are make, taking the search is also used to search similar structures in the structure database so as to report you the similar structures and in addition MMDB provides a helper application for use in web browser known as C in 3D which allows you to visualize and analyze the three dimensional structure of the molecule which we have searched. In addition if there is any bound substrate in the active site of the enzyme then that structure is also displayed in the CN, C in 3D helper application or web browser application. Therefore, experimental methods for determination of structure that is X-ray crystallography and NMR spectroscopy are very useful to arrive at the three-dimensional structural information so as to analyze the functioning of these biomolecules. However, Experimental methods for determination of structures, three-dimensional structures are time consuming. For example, to uh, determine the structure of one protein, it may take one year, complete one year to determine the structures using X-ray crystallography. 
Therefore, it's very time consuming. Sometimes we need a structure, an adequate structure, uh, so that we can analyze its uh, functioning using uh, analysis software so as to set design drugs. In that case, instead of going for lengthy time consuming experimental determination of structure, uh, theoretical predictive methods are employed, such as homology modeling. In homology modeling, a structure which is homologous to the sequence in hand is used to borrow the structure and to apply on the sequence in hand. In that way, uh, homologous proteins, because homologous proteins are those proteins which are descending from a common ancestor. Since they have descended from a common ancestor, these two sequences during evolution will of course gather mutations, but still they will be identity, they will have identity at most of the position. Since they have identity at most of the position in the two sequences and they have descended from a common ancestor. So in that case, the function which was performed by common ancestor may be evolving and might have same function altered function. So, in that case, the structure which is due to the sequence of the protein is not changing much. Therefore, if we have structure for one homologous protein and sequence of another homologous protein, the structure of the homologous protein can be borrowed and applied to understand the function of the sequence for which structure is not known. Therefore, for homologous sequences, both the structure and function knowledge can be applied. In that case, homology modeling is used for prediction of the structure model. Once the model is predicted, the same can also be deposited in the database. And that is what we have today, model archives for storing the structures of the predicted models. These are separate from the experimentally determined structures because PDB announced uh, uh, in 2006 that PDB will allow only deposition of the experimental structures. Therefore, we have a model archive separate which has been generated uh, by the community. Therefore, the learning objectives in this module are to familiarize with experimental methods used to determine structures of proteins and nucleic acids. Then, for analysis, we learn to access and search online experimental structure databases to download experimentally determined structures of proteins and nucleic acids. We'll also learn online analysis and visualization of three-dimensional structures of proteins and nucleic acids within the web browsers, that is online web browsers. Finally, we'll access and search online theoretical structure databases for downloading individual files for offline analysis. Dear students, we have seen that X-ray crystallography and NMR micro, uh, spectroscopy is used for determination of the three-dimensional structures of the proteins and other macromolecules. Both of these methods employ electromagnetic radiations that is containing photons. Photons which are particles moving in a wave-like pattern. When these photons contact any real object, then these photon particles may be reflected back. And if they contact on the side, they can be diffracted. Or if they contact in the middle, they can also be absorbed. In X-ray crystallography, diffraction of the photon particles are used for determination of the three-dimensional structures of the proteins. In NMR spectroscopy, the absorption of the photon particles, which is radio waves employed in NMR, is used for determination of the three-dimensional structures. Dear students, the atomic positions in the three dimensions are represented using Cartesian coordinates. That is the coordinate in the x direction for measuring the width of the object that is the protein or DNA molecule, in the y direction for measuring the height of the molecule and z direction for measuring the depth 
depth of the molecule. These are the coordinates in the three dimensions that is x, y and z and uh, these are known as Cartesian coordinates. The distance between the two objects is measured using units which in SI units are meters. Atoms are of very very small size. In this case units 10 raised to the power minus 10 that is an angstrom is used. The atoms are in the range of this sizes that is around 1 to 2 angstroms each atom. Therefore, for measuring the distance between the two atoms, angstrom units are used for specifying the positions of the atoms in the macromolecules. Very small objects cannot be seen with naked eyes. Therefore, magnifying glasses were developed. In this technique, the photons or the radiations or the visible light which falls on an object is reflected back. Once it is reflected back, the object can be viewed, but if the object is very small, it cannot be viewed with naked eyes. Therefore, magnifying glasses were developed, which magnify the size of the object. Technique of X-ray diffraction, crystallography, X-ray crystallography uses the similar technique. Instead of reflection, it uses diffraction. That is, when the X-rays falls on the object, the X-rays are diffracted in various direction and an image is collected. And that is used to then interpret the three-dimensional three structure of the protein molecule. If instead of X-rays or visible light, we employ the electrons to view the structure, then that is known as scanning electron microscopy. For X-ray crystallography, a protein molecule is used to diffract the photon particles. The photons are diffracted because of the presence of the electronic cloud around the atoms. And the extent of diffraction is determined by the electronic distribution around the atoms. The electronic distribution around the atom is different for each atom. It is different for, for the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. Therefore, electronic cloud can be detected using the X-rays. However, individual atoms in individual protein molecules do not give the sufficient signal which can be processed. Therefore, instead of individual molecules and orderly arranged molecules known as a crystal, crystal is used in X-ray crystallography. This crystal is orderly arrangement of the protein molecules and in this crystal all the molecules are arranged in ordered manner so that the signal which is pr produced by one molecule can be added to the signal produced by another molecule. Protein molecules are prepared from the protein solutions which are having pure protein that is a purified protein. Mean the protein present in the solution is to be separated from the solution and we know that the how to separate the proteins. Crudely speaking, uh, in salting out process when we add some salts then proteins are precipitated say adding ammonium sulphate for protein precipitation but this does not produce a crystal it produces a precipitate an amorphous mass or unordered structure for crystallography we need crystals in which the positions of the molecules are ordered for producing crystal instead of separating the molecules in a cook manner, the protein molecules are allowed to sit in their ordered position in a very slow manner. That is, in this way, we produce the crystal wherein the protein molecules are allowed to sit in their respective ordered positions in a crystal in such a slow manner that they does not produce an unordered amorphous precipitate. This is what we call a crystal because they have a clearly defined shape and this crystal is then used for X-ray crystallography. Therefore, instead of quick precipitation, a very slow process of 
producing crystal is used. This happens uh, in a method uh, like hanging drop method, wherein we have the protein solution. Let us say this is the well or the tube on which we put a cover slip having a hanging drop of the protein solution. Now the target is to extract the solvent from the solution. And for that solvent will move from its higher concentration to lower concentration. Therefore, in the tube, put the solvent having a salt. That is majority of the concentration now in this is salt. Therefore, solvent is less in the lower component that is the tube. So, the solvent which evaporates from the hanging drop goes and uh, absorbed in the uh, uh, salting solution. In this way, the solvent molecules are extracted very slowly and ultimately with an overnight process, we get what we call a crystal. A crystal means an ordered structure and this crystal is then used for X-ray crystallography. Once prepared, a crystal is mounted in a capillary tube, the, then the crystal is exposed to the X-rays. X-rays has wavelength in the range of angstroms, 1, 2, 3 angstroms. The wavelength less than 3 angstroms is used to obtain better resolution. But resolution here means is the whatever is the wavelength of the X-rays, if it is on the lower side, say around 1, then it is able to produce a better resolution image. Whereas if we use the wavelength on higher side, say 3 angstroms, then it will produce an image of the protein molecule with lower resolution. The resolution is to resolve two objects separately. For example, let us say these are the two atoms which are bound to each other. If we use wavelength higher, then this will behave as a single object. Two atoms cannot be resolved and cannot be viewed separately. If we use the wavelength which is lower, then lower wavelength will be able to resolve this atom as well as this atom. Therefore, using lower wavelength is performed uh, for obtaining higher resolution. So once the crystal is available, orderly arranged protein molecules in the form of crystal, they diffract the X-rays and the X-rays diffracted by the crystal that is protein molecules present in the crystal help to amplify the signal. In microscopy, lenses are used to focus the diffracted light or the reflected light, but lenses to focus X-rays are not available. So we cannot focus the X-rays using lenses to form an image. Therefore, a mathematical transformation known as Fourier transform is used to interpret the diffracted image produced by the crystal using X-ray crystallography. This is used, that is Fourier transform is used to translate the X-ray diffraction pattern into what we call electron density map. That is the electron density of the atoms in the protein molecule. Now once we have the electron density map and if we have the sequence of the protein molecule, that is what is the amino acid sequence of the protein molecule, once we know that we know which atoms are present in the protein molecule. All these sequence atoms in the protein molecule is then fitted onto the electron density map. So a hydrogen will be fitted into the electron density for hydrogen, a nitrogen for the nitrogen. In this way, the three-dimensional structure of the protein molecule is produced and this is what we call X-ray crystallography. So it begins with crystallization and then mounting the crystal in a capillary tube, producing a diffracted pattern, an image containing thousands of spots transforming this diffracted pattern into electron density map using Fourier transform and then fitting the sequence, amino acid sequence on this electron density map to produce the actual structure. Electron density maps for the determined structures are also uh, available in the databases. The three dimensional structures 
of the proteins and other macromolecules are deposited in protein data banks. The original repository of the, all the protein structures were the PDB database, which was created some 40 years back. Now we have research collaboratory for structural biology, that is RCSB. This collaboration has produced what we call WWPDB, that is Worldwide Protein Data Bank. It houses the original three-dimensional structures determined experimentally in the original PDB database. In addition, we have PDB Europe, that is PDBE in Europe, which provides advanced web interface for searching macromolecules and ligands. One another member is Biological Magnetic Nuclear Resonance Database, that is Biological Magnetic Resonance Database, BMRB. This houses the uh, NMR determined structures for the macromolecules, that is proteins, peptides, nucleic acids and other macromolecules. The fourth member is Protein Data Bank Japan. It has additional capability or interface which supports browsing in multiple languages such as Japanese, Chinese, Korean, in addition to English. The original database, PDB, is now housed at RCSB. And this is containing the experimentally determined structures of the proteins, nucleic acids, and other complex macromolecular assemblies. Using RCSB PDB web interface, let us download the enzyme orthosuccinyl benzoate synthase, that is OSB synthase, abbreviated as OSBS. Simply enter the phrase orthosuccinyl benzoate synthase in the search box and click go button or click on the suggested uniprot molecule name, that is orthosuccinyl benzoate synthase, to reach the results page showing 32 structure hits. In addition, refinements are offered. These are offered uh, using organism name, uniprot molecule name, taxonomy terms are also suggested to refine the query for search. We'll use query refinement based on organism in a short while. We have already seen uniprot molecule name at XPASI, that is Expert Protein Analysis System, at XPASI server, which is the gateway for all the protein sequences available at Uniprot Knowledge Base interface for downloading protein sequences. And we have seen this Uniprot database uh, in module three, that is Molecular Sequence Databases. We have also seen Enzyme Commission EC number database in module two, that is uh, molecular database concept. These two are used for searching the databases for getting the protein structures. These two terms are suggested by PDB at RSBC, RCSB. In addition, gene ontology terms are also used for defining the query at PDB. Gene ontology, that is geo, terminology has three levels. The topmost level is the cellular component, whether the cellular component is uh, intracellular or extracellular. At the lowest level, we have the component known as molecular function. This is the elemental or the basal level and it describes the binding or the catalysis of the protein molecule at the molecular level. The intermediate level is the biological process level. Uh, this is something like uh, having uh, defining biochemical pathway or a signal cascade. And these are very sig significant to the functioning of the integrated biosystems, such as uh, network of pathways. Let us say that uh, we are interested in the organism E. coli structures. Selection of this organism refinement will present four PDB entries. The first two entries in files two 
OFJ and file 1R6W are the mutant structures determined for examining the role of amino acids in catalysis by this enzyme. The next two entries show wild type proteins. The first in the file 1FHU is the free enzyme without substrate and second is the enzyme with the bound substrate in the file 1FHV. Depending upon the analysis required, click on the four letter entry ID that is PDB ID. Let us say that uh, we are interested in active site analysis of OSBS with the bound ligand. Therefore, click four letter code for the last entry that is 1FHV to reach uh, the PDB file containing this enzyme structure with the bound ligand. The ensuing PDB entry page offers two panels. Left panel is used for online structure visualization as well as analysis and right panel has options to display or download the content of the PDB file as well as has access to literature information. In the left panel, a snapshot image of the biological assembly of OSBS molecule is displayed. Click on the right arrow button in the left panel to display a snapshot for asymmetric unit. An asymmetric unit is the raw structured data resolved by X-ray crystallography. On the other hand, biological assembly is defined as the biochemically active form of a biomolecule. It may be a single asymmetric unit or more than one asymmetric units. Conversely, an asymmetric unit structure may be one complete biological assembly or a portion of the biological assembly or multiple copies of the biological unit. In the enzyme OSBS, both biological unit and asymmetric unit are same that is they are monomers. Let us say that uh, we are interested in online structure visualization and analysis of enzyme OSBS with JMOL at PDB. In addition to JSMOL, PV is another JavaScript viewer to visualize protein structures directly in the browsers. It's super fast and easy to integrate into your website and does not require any plugins to be installed. To view molecular structure online using a web browser, one need to install and enable Java for web applets. Therefore, visit Proteopedia for instructions on installing and enabling Java. After enabling Java, in case it is not enabled already, click on JSMOL hyperlink displayed below the snapshot image. This will start JSMOL web applet in browser window. Hover the mouse over the protein image to rotate molecule in X axis. Click left mouse button and drag mouse in Y axis direction that is vertical direction. To rotate molecule in Y axis, click left mouse button and drag in the X axis direction that is horizontal direction. To rotate molecule in Z axis, press shift and click left mouse button and drag in X axis direction that is horizontal direction. To move molecule in XY plane, press control key and click right mouse button and drag in XY plane. To move in Z direction, that is to zoom in or to zoom out, click middle mouse button and move in Y axis, that is vertical direction. 
the right top box contains structure details. Below structure details box, the options for orientation from each of the four sides is available. Display mode such as secondary structure are also available. Below display mode, three display options are available. The custom display options are available for style, color and surface. The options for style include cartoon. Other options are backbone, space fill, ball and stick, ligands, ligands and pocket, trace, ribbon, the one which is shown till now. The options for color include secondary structure color, rainbow color, sequence, subunit color, symmetry, hydrophobicity and amino acid. The options for surface include water mean solvent accessible, solvent excluded and cavities. Now switch to image panel. The OSBS enzyme is having the bound substrate that is OSB and this is located inside the core which is not possible because the inside is buried and is hydrophobic. Right click anywhere within the image, a context menu will appear. Choose color option followed by selecting background and finally select black. This will change the background color to black and display molecule with good contrast. Now rotate the molecule to display structure active site. This will display the substrate in the active site which is displayed as ball and stick. Right click anywhere within the image panel. This will display a context menu. Now select surfaces followed by selecting wonder wall surface. This shows that active site of the enzyme is in a wide cleft to appreciate active site access better. Take images of the substrate from all the four orientations that is from left side, from front side, from right side and from back side. The cavities, wide cavities on the left and front sides of the structure might provide wide open space for substrate entry into the actual active site. Till now, the molecule is displayed in two dimensions. That is, we are able to appreciate only width and the height of the molecule. However, the depth is not visible. To see the depth of the molecule, open or display JS mole context menu either with right click or press control and click left mouse anywhere on the image. This will display a context menu. Select style followed by stereographic option and then choosing cross eyed viewing. If you know to view stereographic image with crossed eyes, you will be able to see the depth of the molecule. This view of the OSBS enzyme shows that it is a monomeric protein containing two domains. The enzyme's active site is located in a cleft between two domains. Finally, further analysis at local computer is required. Therefore, download 1FHV structure in PDB format for local analysis. Open download files drop down list and choose PDB format command. This will open a dialog box having open with and save file options as radio buttons. Choose save file radio button and click OK. This will save PDB file with 1FHV as file name in downloads folder on your local computer. From PDB entry download page, 
you may also access the literature information through a search in the PubMed database and the same may then be downloaded also. The macromolecule modeling database that is MMDB housed at NCBI also archives experimentally determined PDB structures of macromolecules. Visit MMDB and search for orthosuccinyl benzoate synthase. At MMDB, the records of PDB structures are enhanced with computationally identified independently folding domains that are used to identify similar 3D structures in the same database. Therefore, when MMDB is searched for a protein, the similar structures in the MMDB are also presented. Click on similar structures to reach the list of the similar structures. The list of similar structures presents RMST in the fifth column. RMSD means root mean square deviation, which is used to infer homology depending upon the extent of similarity between the two structures. Similarity between two structures is measured using RMSD and the value less than 2.5 angstroms suggest structural homology. The last column in this table lists sequence identity between two sequences. Homology between two sequences with overall sequence identity more than 35 percent is due to close evolutionary relationship. On the other hand, overall sequence identity less than 35 percent but an RMST value less than lower than 2.5 angstroms suggests that these are homologous and these are homologous due to distant relationship among proteins. In addition, MMDB provides links to other NCBI databases such as literature, similar sequences, conserved domains and PubMed compound. The links to proteins make it convenient to find homologous sequences of interest. These links help in browsing related information about a structure to arrive at sequence structure function relationship interactively. The C in 3D link allows online visualization of the structure. But for now, click conserve domains link. This list of enzymes have domains which are similar to OSBS that is these are having conserved domains. We will use OSBS for exploring enzyme active site in the next module. Click on OSBS entry to reach OSBS conserved domain in the database. C in 3D is a helper application for your web browser that allows you to view three-dimensional structures from NCBI Entree Structure Database. C in 3D is provided for Windows and Macintosh and can be compiled on Unix also. C in 3D simultaneously displays structure and alignment of similar sequences. Download, install and configure C in 3D on your computer. Then click view structure to display structure uh, with binding pocket residues. C in 3D will display the OSBS along with the bound substrate. The bound substrate in this slide is shown as solid spheres and binding residues are displayed as solid sticks in green. Like PDB, MMDB also contains only experimentally determined structures. It does not house the predicted models of the protein structures. The structures from the theoretical modeling such as homology modeling were not allowed to be deposited in PDB 
after the announcement by RCSB on 15th October 2006. RCSB announced that only experimentally determined structures will be deposited in the PDB database. Similarly, therefore, MMDB houses only uh, experimentally determined databases. Therefore, on community recommendation, an archive, a database that is model archive of the predicted protein models was developed. Visit model archive which is a part of the protein model portal. As on December 30th, 2015, there were 1410 models deposited on the model archive. Multi-drug resistant organisms is a common problem in medical biochemistry. Let us search for multi-drug resistant as keyword or phrase with these three keywords. This search presents a legacy model originally deposited in the PDB archive with PDB ID 2IQ4. Modbase is a database of comparative protein structure models. The structural biology knowledge base provides the latest structure data resources and highlights from structure biology and the protein structures. Dear students, in this module, we have familiarized with the experimental methods of structure determination that is X-ray crystallography and NMR spectroscopy. These are used for determination of the three dimensional structures of the macromolecules that is proteins and nucleic acids. These structures are then deposited in the protein databases that is PDB at RCSB. We have also seen in this module MMDB at NCBI which is an integrated database with other databases that is the databases are interconnected. I mean when we search the information, structural information for a particular enzyme or a protein, then the links to other databases are also provided, such as links to ligands which are bound to the protein structures, literature information, even the sequence information is also linked to the searched structures. And then the MMDB computationally identifies the uh, domains in the protein structures and produce the another database known as conserved domain database. It also provides the links to the similar structures in the same structure database and also provides an online helper application C in 3D for analyzing, analyzing and visualization of the structures available at the MDB, MMDB. In addition, we have seen the model archive which is the database for the predict structures. Therefore, with this wealth of information about the uh, three-dimensional structures of the macromolecules, we are ready to take our journey to the next level that is analysis of the enzymes and the proteins, say analysis of enzyme active site, the, which are the residues which are present in the active site. Once we identify or detect the residues which are present in the active site, we can hypothesize or visualize the mechanism by which the enzyme will be transforming a substrate to a product. Therefore, with this wealth of information, we will move on to the next module that is enzyme active site analysis. I thank you all for visiting EPG Partshala.